Thank you so much for being on the show again. Give everybody a refresher on who you are and what you do. Right on. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so, yep. Pat, my name is Pat McNamara. I'm a retired special ops guy, 22 years of special ops. Uh, um, I retired in 05. And since I've been retired, I've been um, running my own business under the banner T-Max Inc., uh, where I do um, eh, marksmanship, tactical training, fighting, uh, combat uh, uh, strength training. Uh, I run a online coaching squad, the Pat Mac Keep the Blaze Live coaching squad on Patreon, and a whole bunch of other little projects. Very cool. And you also uh, keep basic dude stuff alive and well on social media. Absolutely. And I love it. That thing's been so much fun. Oh, yeah, man. It looks like you're having a blast. No sight and end. Very cool. Very cool. So you recently had kind of a a weird situation uh, late last year. You were involved, you and your entire county, I guess, were involved in a blackout. Kind of give us an overview of what that was and what caused it. Yeah, so um, it was, uh, there were, it was a big outage. I mean, it was a substantial chunk of not only Mm -hmm. my county, but a couple of the uh, adjoining counties. And it was uh, due to sabotage, this one. Now, but I've always, you know, our our grid sucks. It's weak and it's, it's yes. fragile. Um, and I've been telling people for more than a decade now <laughs> that our grid is vulnerable and that they should have certain things. You know, I've been putting that, pumping out so many PSAs, written not just in my Sentinel book, but online on like Sunday Sentinel sermons on the, uh, on the IG, uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, on all of the platforms. Uh, so yeah, this one happened to be a, a sabotage. It was a saboteur, and it wasn't only my county, but there was uh, several other right places uh, uh, around the country mm-hmm. that got hit nearly simultaneously. A couple of Oregon, Washington State, South Carolina, another one in uh, North Carolina. Uh, all within like a, a span of a couple days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was just uh, crazy because it was funny. I've read your book and I really like it. And when this came out, I was like, man, this is just like he said, (laughs) like to be prepared for the book. Like you really have been calling this for a while. Yeah. So when when the power first went out on that Saturday night, you know, what did you think? Was this like, like, oh, this happens? And and what did you do first? Now, you know, uh, this time it was a little more, uh, there was a little there was a, a sense of urgency that wasn't in um uh like in the, in past p- power outages uh because this one was sudden and i happened to be at at my local pub sipping on a pint talking to somebody and this somebody looked at his phone he goes oh i just got an alert that there might be a uh, some kind of a threat on fort bragg and mm. as soon as he said that boom the power went out So I was thinking, you know what? Uh, I told Rebecca, I said, hey, let's just get the hell out of here. Uh, We're not messing around. We're just going home because my kids were at home. Mm -hmm. So we boogied out. Uh, A lot of people just hung out there. You know, they were just hanging out. I could see them. They were like, yeah, power's out. It might come back on. It was black. It was total blackness. So we boogied home. And um, I think that was about like eight o'clock at night. And it was a Mm -hmm. Saturday night. And we just started... uh, going through our uh basically like our our checklist and our mm-hmm. uh working on priorities um you know we got our house lit up a little bit i pulled out the generator and the generator runs very well uh because i run it once a month i've mm-hmm. always got gas on hand i've got tons of gas stored and i rotate through it our vehicles are always tanked up we'll, we're never on e Exactly e for excitement, you know, on our in our cars, <laughs> they, they've always got gas in them. Our rule of thumb is cars in the driveway never below three quarters of a tank. Absolutely. So yeah, we just started work do, uh, getting into uh, priorities of work as soon as we went home, and um, you know, threw some lights on. We didn't even we busted out the generator, mm-hmm. put it into the garage, closed the garage manually, and kind of waited it out because what do you need a generator for? It's it just happens. Right. Right. You don't right. need to power stuff up. Uh, the next day we get some news that, yes, this was intentional mm-hmm. and that it was going to be one day. <laughs> <laughs> right. At the end of one day, you know, uh, we started, we kept getting text updates. Uh, this is going to be two days. And then 
uh, as soon as the two day notice came out, I think it was very shortly after that, they said, Hey, Thursday afternoon. Mm. They're like, Oh, okay, crap. This is, this is a good, this is a good chunk of time. Now we're talking five days. Uh, and I knew some people are going to be hurting for certain, you know, sure. for five days and no power. Uh, so, um, yeah, we just started powering stuff up as necessary. We didn't go crazy. We don't need to power the whole house up. Right. But I pulled out my, my jet heater and, um, generator pulled out a couple five gallon cans of, of EF 90 and just kind of went on standby. And it was almost business as usual. We didn't need anything mm -hmm. because Rebecca and I prep, yeah. we got stuff. So we didn't need, we, we didn't need emergency fuel. We didn't mm -hmm. need emergency food. We didn't need to go out and get any of this stuff. Our local grocery store was open. Uh, because they've got a massive um, semi truck generator out in back of it, so they were open. Okay, we didn't need anything. Next, you know, that morning, the first Monday Sunday or first morning Sunday morning, I got up, made coffee for my wife, brought it to her in bed, just like any other morning. Because all I did was bust out the small propane stoves and things like that. So I just cooked mm -hmm. in the kitchen as per usual, um, and it was just business as as usual. And then. We went through all of Monday. We didn't have to go anywhere. We just kind of hung out. We cooked food. Um, uh, I had to go to the store to get um, to get some wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, um, priorities, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 the same thing. I'm watching. You know, the grocery store people pick up the same crap as they always pick up. They're scrambling for stuff like bottled water, uh, toilet paper. Uh, milk for whatever reason. I don't know, just stuff like that. You know, uh, Rebecca and I bought real food. We, we were <laughs> cooking. So we said, we'll get some steaks, some green beans, you know, and, and uh, we'll make a, a smorgasbord. Um, and then Tuesday morning, got up business as usual. Again, I made, made us coffee. I went to the store to get something. And what blew my mind is the Harris tier that is right up the road from me. It was jam packed and the line to get, freaking starbucks coffee was about a hundred meters long <laughs> it went from the starbucks inside the store all the way through the bakery aisle to the to, oh, the, uh, to the butcher counter and i was like you gotta be kidding me man ah. and, you know, I, I i i i was i was thinking what kind of a man right has to go to the store to go to starbucks to get his wife coffee instead of yeah. just brewing it at home man i i felt and the other thing I saw them picking up was um those ten dollar bundles of wood, yeah, you know, from the grocery store, and 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 then the line for to get gas was unbelievable too. I didn't need any of it. I just drove by right. the gas station. Right, because you have it. Need, yeah, we didn't need anything. We didn't need anything. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, we <laughs> had the other thing that we have is a uh, overlander camper. Mm -hmm. So we have an overlander. So we just pulled out the um the stainless steel stove and we cooked on that. We didn't really need the house for much, even though it was chilly. We kind of hung outside. We made some fires. Uh, I turned the 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 overlander camper is solar, so uh, we turned on the hot water heater and took showers in it because that was the only thing. I, my house isn't wired for gas. So I wasn't able to um to use a lot of hot water. We we conserve the hot water. And I told the kids, I said, all right, so this is two days now. Mm -hmm. Everybody take a shower because no, we haven't used any hot water yet. Mm -hmm. So once I found out it was long term, that's when we said, Hey, let's let's take a shower now. Uh everybody take a five minute shower. I'll be the last one in. And by the time I got in, there was still it was still warm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't blazing hot, but it was still warm. I'm sure you've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that, absolutely. But I wanted everybody to be comfortable. You know, I wanted my mm -hmm. kitties to be comfortable, my wife to be comfortable. Um, so, yeah, uh, this was for me by no means roughing it. Mm -hmm. Now, for my kids, on the other hand, it was rough. My daughter had a pretty good time. My son was like, this sucks because no <laughs> electronics for him. Right. You know, he's an electronics junkie. Mm -hmm. So it sucked bad for him. But I was just in hog heaven. I was partying my off for Rebecca and I. <laughs> and then the other thing is um you know like entertainment value at night we just made fires mm -hmm. you know we just made uh backyard uh uh fire pit fires and hung out by the fire pit 
mm -hmm. it was wonderful. Um, I was, it was, it was kind of a bummer because there was overcast almost every night. So we mm. couldn't stargaze, mm -hmm. you know, there was one night when we could stargaze and that, what else do you need for entertainment? That's a plethora of entertainment right there. You know, stargazing clear night. Yeah. You can go on and on. You can go down a rabbit hole with that. So, uh, it was, it, 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 it was nice, especially if you know a little bit about the sky map and, and mm -hmm. what the sky is telling you, um, you could, you could have a lot of fun just stargazing. Uh, uh, but we, um, uh, we, we, we didn't, we didn't suffer one iota. And I know a lot of people did, uh, because right. I, I'm on group texts with the neighborhood mm -hmm. and they were scrambling to get stuff. And I told them, I said, Hey, if you need it, I could help you out. But I wasn't disclosing. Right. All sure. That I have. Yeah. Because yeah, you gotta yeah, be yeah. careful with that. Even with friends mm -hmm. and family, mm -hmm. you know, if you have stuff, you don't want to disclose all that you have. Right. You know, I, I, I let it known. Yeah. I have things. And if you need things, if it's an emergency, I could help you out. Cause I'm not yeah. going to be one of those guys to mm -hmm. you know, safeguard completely and go lockdown. I want to be a good steward of my community because what comes around goes around and you never know what you might need as well. So you can't just go in lockdown and say, I'm not going to help anybody. But right. on the on the flip side, you can't disclose and say, I could help everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've got this, this, and this. You right. know, come, you know, try to take because it. Because five days could turn long, it could turn a lot longer. You know, yeah. Like, um, yeah. And when we people were, start we to were... get desperate, they make bad decisions at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the I, I, I and there were for us, it was, I think like the third or fourth night in. I was sitting by the campfire talking to Rebecca and I was saying, Hey, we got to make a list of shortcomings. Mm. You know, what is it that we don't have? How, it, how can we improve on this in the event that it's long-term? How can we improve right. on it? And man, we, we really did a lot of thinking about it and there was, there's not a lot more that we needed. Mm -hmm. It's, but it, there was one thing. So, um, I have a gas fireplace and we use that sparingly, you mm -hmm. know, to heat the heat the house. Right. We use it sparingly. But above the gas fireplace, I have a vaulted ceiling. Now there's uh, a fan. Right. Yeah, yeah. There's a fan, mm -hmm. but that fan is run by electricity and it does a good job when the fans on low and the gas fireplace is on. It keeps the house pretty, uh, pretty warm. Right. Um, you know, not freezing. And so that one there, I was like, Oh crap. Uh, so I got some um, uh, rechargeable fans, some battery operated, rechargeable battery operated mm -hmm. fans just for that. <laughs> so we could put them up on the mantle and stuff mm -hmm. and send. Uh, oh, yeah, that's um, smart. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because otherwise yeah. all that heat is trapped up there in that vaulted ceiling. Mm -hmm. You're not getting any of it. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that bothered me. Um, uh, but there wasn't much more. I mean, we were man we had you know lights we had solar we uh, means to charge all of our electronics the generator and we barely used the generator we trickled it we came up uh, like i said monday sunday we didn't use it monday i said all right we'll fire it up because i have a a meat freezer in the garage um and you know a fridge freezer in the house too but one of the things i do on a regular basis, I will freeze gallons of water. So mm -hmm. I've got gallons of water frozen in my meat freezer in the garage. So if the power goes out, I could just transfer those into the fridge and keep my perishables cold. Yeah. Uh, and then keep a couple in the big freezer as well. Uh, Tuesday morning, when I checked on the meat in the, in the garage fridge, it was still solid frozen. It was still frozen. <laughs> So the only thing I used the generator for, I plugged it in and ran the inside fridge for two hours in the morning, two hours at night. That was it. Mm -hmm. That was almost it. And then uh, twice for my jet heater, where mm -hmm. I would plug in the jet heater and then plug that into a propane tank and then fire it into the house and just, you know, because it would five minutes, it's going to heat up the whole house. Right. Yeah. Those, yeah, those, those are big jets. Yeah. Those, mm -hmm. Yeah. Those things are great. Uh uh, there was another thing that I, that I, that I was happy. Oh, happy that I had was tons of those, you know, blue rhino, um, propane tanks. Yeah. 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 Tons of those. So I had, I always have six of those. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Six. So, you know, we're going to be able to cook for a long time on that. Sure. Because we barely, I think for in five days, this was my, this was my consumption in five days, six gallons of fuel. Uh -huh. I still had one, two, three, four, five full five gallon jugs of EF 90. And then two and a half more gallons um, left in the one tank. So we used only like six gallons of, of, of gas. And then we used a tank and a half of propane in five days. That was all of our consumption. Now, now, now that just, uh, that propane, we, we used a little bit more than that. And I didn't really take a good inventory on the um, Overlander camper. On the Overlander mm -hmm. camper, we used a little bit more on that because we cooked with that. Sure. But our con our consumption was pretty low. The one thing we consumed a lot of was firewood, but that was strictly for entertainment value. Right. Okay. We didn't heat the home with it. That was that was just outside fire. Right. Because you, you don't want to be inside just sitting by a little, um, uh, uh, just a little gas fireplace. Yeah, a little gas fireplace, or um, just a little rechargeable light, reading a book when you could be outside doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. So every night, you know, we made, we made a nice big fire and it was just good to have the family around that and, you know, passing a, passing a bottle of wine around, just chewing the fat and uh, telling stories. Um, we had uh, you know, a portable uh, speaker. So we would, we still had phone, mm -hmm. you know, so we could still Bluetooth and play music out there, <laughs> which was fun. But yeah, we had, we, we wanted for almost app for nothing we wanted for nothing we didn't need a thing not a thing uh and, and you know what's weird is um not a week before that you may have seen this where i put it up on the interwebs not a week before this i was doing a mini vlog with my bud buddy uh cj ortiz mm -hmm. yep because i just finished a new project and that was an outdoor um an outhouse yeah yeah i did I see that an outhouse with I a did. composting toilet uh-huh and he said, why the outhouse? Well, for me, I just wanted a project. I thought it'd be cool to have an outhouse. Guys come over uh, to sit around the fire pit. They need to go to the bathroom. I could say, just use the outhouse because all that goes back into my my compost pile. Right. All that stuff. Uh, but the other thing I was telling CJ is, you know, um, think about power outages, right? And I, I said it was just one week before. I says, think about massive power outage. Um, and then how vulnerable our grid is not only that, but our water supply is vulnerable too. Mm -hmm. Now water is still going to be flowing, right? You know, water is still going to be flowing for some time, right? But not indefinitely because water needs electricity to pump as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, that stuff doesn't just happen by gravity, you know? So, um, but it was so funny that I just finished that outhouse uh, right before that, uh, because it was, you know, for us that was a massive power. Five days is, is oh a, yeah, for is sure, a long time. You know, for for some people, two days they're freaking out. Mm -hmm. But we're we're vulnerable. You know, you, you brought up the composting toilet, and I have to ask you, like, when you decided, hey, I'm going to take this on as a project, did your wife Rebecca like say, hey, why are you doing this or that sort of thing? Did did she give you any sort of resistance? No, we she's got full buy in. Um, we're, she's my lifetime teammate and I talk to her about everything. I don't, you know, say, Hey, I want to build an under, underground bunker, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because she would definitely say, are you freaking out of your, out of your, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I run everything past her. No, she was 100% on board That's awesome. because, you know, we plan for once again, long-term, long-term, you know, mm -hmm. long-term stuff. And if the water's not running, where are you going to go potty? Right, right. People don't think about it. Now, it, no, it, they don't. I have had, you know, it, it, because I plan for it, I have in my prep supplies, I've got one of those Hunter, the Hunter toilets, mm -hmm. it's just a five-gallon bucket right. with a cover and a toilet seat. And then it's got uh, um, biodegradable bags and biodegradable TP. Um, <clears throat> so I've had that for the longest time. Uh, but I thought the outhouse would be so much cooler, mm -hmm. so much more comfortable. And it looks cool. It's, it's very aesthetically pleasing. 
and it's neat to have an outhouse in the backyard. It's got cedar shingles on the top, the, the crescent moon in the front. It does. It has the crescent on it and everything. I thought I got that was book, great. I got a uh, magazine rack inside, and I put some <laughs> some vintage Playboy magazines in it. <laughs> you know, so it's it's kind of like a, a little bit humorous, but right. also very very functional. It is. You kind of alluded to this a minute ago. You were saying that you didn't really want to advertise all the stuff that you had available to your family. Were you ever worried about looting or home invasions? Was that ever a concern for you or the community? Well, it, you know what? If, if Here's the thing. I live in what I would consider to be a very, very, very safe community. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, I have all these measures up. Uh, as well yes but um the thing is we can't you can't get complacent you can't say oh it'll never happen to me and you you know like these people say yeah i'm in a neighborhood where i could leave my front door unlocked well that that kind of attitude and mindset gets people jacked up you know what i mean because i do live in one of those neighborhoods and my stuff is never unlocked ever so, yeah, we talked about it and we said, hey, let's go into lockdown every night. So lock up um, all, all the sheds. Generator would come inside, close the garage door, all vehicles locked. Yep. It, so total lockdown at night, making sure just to uh, just to make sure. And then the other thing we did is we um, even though it was it wasn't super cold, so it was permissible uh-huh. to do this. We just cracked my bedroom window just so I could hear. And so the dog can hear because we, you know, right. Right. Because we wanted my, my, I call Grace my woof woof. You know, she's, she's the uh, um, first line of defense, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So I wanted her to be able to hear in the event people were sneaking around. But I think, you know, I think people know just by the looks of the, the neighborhood now everything is in order and the type of vehicles this probably isn't the neighborhood you want to mess around with sure sure probably is you know american flags flying my uh, d- uh don't tread on me flag flying in the front yard you know they're like <laughs> th- there's indicators there right yeah you know, absolutely that, that there say, is. you know what you don't you probably want to go to another neighborhood right right yeah. And then yeah. I would patrol uh, because I, okay. I'm not the only one. Uh, my, my neighbors are switched on as well. Mm-hmm. But every morning I get up, I get on my dirt bike and just patrol not only the neighborhood, but the surrounding woods. Mm-hmm. Just make a couple loops, you know, and look to see if anything's out of the ordinary. Because I do have an obligation to be a good steward of my community and help protect my neighbors in the event shit goes south. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh so I would make sure that I did that every day and I would just check on him. You guys good. You know, I didn't need mm-hmm. to go and say, do you need anything? I just said, right. you guys good uh, because I know that they're good, but I wanted to extend it anyway. You know, mm-hmm. and just say, are, are you good? Very cool. So, you know, what was a big lesson that you learned from all of this other than that? Yes. Your, your preparedness did work out. What was, uh, what was another takeaway that you have from this? Well, the sheeple are going to remain sheeple. Hmm. That 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 one, I, I it always amazes me. But when you when I want, would go to Harris Teeter, just because I think the only thing needed, because uh, I we were still getting people were getting packaged foods. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Packages of stuff, prepared stuff. Rebecca and I were cooking, so I would go to get fresh produce and stuff every day. You know, and, and a new cut of meat or whatever it was. Um, so the sheeple are going to remain sheeple. The same mm-hmm. people who during the uh, I, I can't call it pandemic, uh, the lockdown, <laughs> the same people who went through the, who during the lockdown were scrambling for toilet paper are going to be the same people who do it over and over again. When the, uh, the pipeline, the fuel pipeline got hit here at the yes. beginning of last year, Yep, all the Southeast of the United States, the same people who were on a quarter of a tank then and waited in fuel lines and had no gas are the same people who are going to do it again. Uh, so and, and as soon as it was over, I mean, I'm talking like the second, it, it was uh, over Thursday night, Friday morning. I got up real early and got everything refitted. I got that, uh, those tanks of propane refueled. I filled up the, uh, um, the one five gallon jug of EF 90. I got that filled up. I filled up, uh, just topped off. The cars were already topped off because we didn't have to drive anywhere. Right. So they were already topped off, but top those off. Just made sure everything was refit. So if it happened again right now on the Friday after the Thursday, that we were ready again. Because I think a lot of people would just would have gone, sure. thank Christ, it's over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
You know, we didn't do that. We went into yep. refit. Right. You know, we went right into that resupply refit. I like it. Um, so, so, but that was a good lesson learned because I'd never had to refit before. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, so I'm not sure if that was a lesson, but that's new protocol. It just happened. Yeah. This is protocol. As soon as you get a chance, re reorganize, resupply, refit immediately. Uh, but, and then the sheep, the sheeple are going to remain sheeple. Right. But besides that, uh, there, there wasn't a lot that I wish I had. Oh, um, <clears throat> firewood is a good thing to have, even mm -hmm. if you don't have a fireplace. Right. I would tell people that from now on, just because morale, making mm -hmm. a fire in your backyard, you know, or in a fire pit, so good for morale. Mm -hmm. You know, watching That's that cool. Ranger TV, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because it's very primal staring right. into the fire with your family mm -hmm. so i would encourage that you know i would encourage people who say well in the event this happens what should i say hey get a freaking you know off season when it's not super expensive mm -hmm. get you a, get you a half a cord of, of wood and just store it in a on a pallet somewhere in your yard keep it covered keep it dry just so you have it so you can make that fire yeah man. we had a lot of it and we were able to make fires every night. And it was a game changer. Making fires every night was a real game changer. That's awesome. Plus, you get to teach your kids, you know, how to build a fire. I'm sure your kids already know. But just in general, you know, you could pass that skill on to a younger generation. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, as we wrap up here, you know, what is something that you would tell the average suburban family? What are some things that you need to take care of so you can be prepared in the event of a blackout situation like this? You know, you, you got to think of uh, comfort items. Right. Have comfort items. So you're not uncomfortable. Have those. And you don't have to plan for long. Like I plan for long term. I plan for months. Mm -hmm. And then in the event happens, you know, I could go long. I could go longer than that. I can go because we're pretty self-sustained. But be prepared for two days. Just mm -hmm. two days. Have gas in your cars. You don't have to follow my rule by three quarters of a tank in the driveway. It could be half a tank in the driveway. But have fuel. Have have solar powered lights have a, a like a like a jackery system or something like that you know uh -huh. a, um, a power station a solar power station and you don't go to costco you know tomorrow and spend five thousand dollars on on stuff you let it this accumulate over time but you don't want to you don't want to be in this situation again and go oh man the power went out and i had don't have these things and it is a good idea to have a generator, even though I didn't use it that much. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I mean, there were neighbors of mine who let them run the entire time. And it drove me crazy yeah. because that that noise, you know, I want silence. Yes. It was so nice because because once the lights went out, it was quiet. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, I really appreciated the silence. But now we have that murmur of generators. You know, there were two of them that went nonstop for five days in my neighborhood. And it was just like, it was kind of a bummer because there went the silence. Right, right. So I, I would say consider it, consider that too, you know, just some consideration. Mm -hmm. You don't need to run them the whole freaking time because damn man, they're noisy, you know? Yeah, yeah, they um, are. Uh, but have things, have, have just it, like an emergency pantry, mm -hmm. water, food, mm -hmm. first aid, entertainment, uh, hygiene, those kind of things. Because, you know, a couple of days power outage, you know how, if you don't have a, a, a means of heating water, uh -huh. you know, you get nasty. You want to stay clean during these things. Cleanliness, you know, it's very important. So we were, we were clean. We were heating water, taking showers in our camper and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It sounds like you guys actually just had like a little mini vacation there. It, you know, it was right kind of Christmas. like that. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like a mini vacation. It was, for me, it was beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> uh, very cool man i could have gone another week yeah buddy thank you so much for talking with me today and sharing some of your wisdom and what you learned here if people want to know more about you where can they find you online um uh, most everything is under uh t max inc t-m-a-c-s-i-n-c uh that's my instagram my website uh everything on my instagram is off of linktree i have a uh, online uh, coaching squad the pat mac keep the blaze live coaching squad on patreon where we talk about all this stuff I mean, we go into depth on there, uh, but those are the big ones. And I have a cool YouTube channel, Pat Mac YouTube channel. Yes, very true. Hey, man, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much today. God bless you, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you for having me again. Rock and roll. Boom. <laughs>